Hey guys, it's Tim Gillette here with the Tim Gillette Show, and we are back for another episode, our last one of the day, all right? We've been doing it pretty uh, gangbusters today and gotten a lot of great interviews in today, some great people we've met. Today's uh, interview is someone I've had on my shows before, I think more than once, and uh, it's always one of those people that is a leader here in the Dallas area that uh, I was actually introduced to uh, by another fellow speaker here in the Dallas area. Uh, I think we met at a coffee shop for the very first time, and we've been close friends ever since. And uh, you know what I mean? We've seen each other at events, uh, you know, a lot of places. Uh, just last week, we actually uh, worked an event together online. But um, he's been an inspiration to me, and I, I always love getting him back on here, talking about his story, talking about how he helps people, uh, you know, working with him at events has always been a joy. Uh, my buddy, Scott Schilling. So let me bring Scott on here. Mr. Scott, how are you? I'm fabulous. I'll yeah. get better though. Yeah. It's, 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 you know, we, we decided, you decided to close the day up with the best for last, huh? Well, th they'll be the judge of that. We'll, we'll certainly <laughs> do everything in our power to make it uh, as, as good as we can make it for sure. We, we will. So Scott, you remember that first time we met? Yeah, we were at Starbucks. I it mean, was, it was Judy, Shane, wasn't it? Shane, Judy, Judy said, you guys, do you know, guys know each other? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that all works, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. You're, you're hanging out. All the speakers are in the coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, you know. And I, up you know how many of you met, like, in coffee shops here in town that, like, you know what I mean, throughout the years? Just think about it. You kind of, that's the first place you run into them is a coffee shop. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. As soon as you said that, Austin, I thought about another shop up uh, on the north side where Dean Lindsay was one day, he went walking in. So again, just, you know, speakers and trainers everywhere, you yeah, know, I mean. Yeah. I um, I was over at the Casa Manana Theater over in Fort Worth and um, uh, Carrie Wilkerson. Nice. From, like like yeah. I, I turned my face and turned back and she goes, Tim Gillette? <laughs> we've seen him know each other know each other but we never met in person that was the first time we ever met in person that's funny and it's just yeah and, and these are the leaders in town that you know what i mean basically we do we see each other uh but like our first meetings in person sometimes are like uh <laughs> yeah really for sure well and then i think i think not too long after that we were over at ziggler and then we were doing something else we just kept on it it was like once we ran into each other we ran into each other in succession, you yeah, know, yeah. multiple times. I think it was in a matter of months before that. That was when I was doing my starting, starting to do my multi days and I had something fall through and I had you stop by as a fill in speaker or something like that. Yeah. I remember that was 2012. Yeah. Um, and I, God, I, I love it. You know, huh? That was that long ago. Yeah, it was dude. Yeah. We're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, there's, you could, you know, gnaw off my arm and count the rings. So for sure. <laughs> I'm trying to think of some other things we've done. Um, you, you've actually, uh, you know, when I was doing my first radio show, you yeah. filled in one time because it, like within five minutes of the show going live, a guy canceled and I just texted you, Hey, are you available to do a show? When? Yeah. Now? Okay. That's right. You got to be ready. You never know when the opportunity is, you know, yeah. it's the beauty of this industry. It is. And like, you know, the other night we were, you and I were doing an event with, uh, for Kim Black here in town and, and, um, you know, Sean Murphy, which we both know, Sean just, I mean, mm -hmm. Dean had, you know what I mean? Out of town, you know, last minute, had to give up being that. Sean jumped in and we all know Sean too. You know what I mean? It's just like all of us, it's just like camaraderie on there, camaraderie on it because we all know each other, you know? Yeah, um, I was on the phone with him just before we started this show. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, world. and I remember the time that you and I in Palm Springs, California. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spoke at an event. And um, that was the I, hard rock, the hard rock. Yep. Yeah. I don't even think that's a hard rock anymore. I think it's gone. The hard rock's gone now. I thought I heard. Oh man. That it's, was a good, that was a nice place. I know a lot of hard rocks are just, you know what I mean? They're stumbling, but anyway, so um, look at that right there. Speaking of Kim, look at her. There she is making comments. Oh, Kim. Yep. oh yep. thank you, Kim. That's so sweet. She is. That's very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, we were at the Hard Rock, and that was an interesting place, Scott, that I learned something from you. Um, you know, you know, you 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 talked about that event, and, and it's something that is in your sales process, all right? And I'm, I hope we get into this today in the conversation, is you talked about at that event, you know, when did when do we start to go to work as a speaker? And you said, the moment I leave the house. 
And yep. it may be because I was sitting in the audience and we both left Dallas that morning to come to the event or something. But you said, what if I was in a grumpy mood and I ran into Tim Gillette in the airport knowing he was going to be here? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that was like an eye opener to me. Oh, my gosh. I leave my house sometimes to go to the airport for a speaking gig. And, and like, you know what I mean? I'm frustrated with traffic. And I'm like, I, I had to learn to calm down after that. Is what if? Well, it's, it's interesting. My uh, speaking mentor always said, "Always be the first speaker there and the last one to leave, and and be there for the people the entire time." Yeah, yeah. right. And and um, it it really goes all the way from leaving your house because you never know who you're going to run into. You never know what the um, uh, who knows who. It's such a small world these days. Mm -hmm. And the other side of it is. You know, I think that was about the time I started suggesting that everybody live as if your life was always on camera. Yeah. yeah. Because in essence, you really are. Yeah. Right. You're always you're always on camera. So live it as if you're on camera. Uh, it'll just be a better reminder to you. And it, it is amazing that that uh, how many. Um, it, let's put it this way. You and I both know the good ones. We also know the less than good ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying by that? Yep, yep. You we, know, it, it's it's the ones that, um, you know, really are there to contribute and do what they can do to add to the to the uh, totality of the event or whatever. And those who are there to just take and take and run. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, over time, people learn which one you are. Yeah. yeah. So. But I mean, you, you know what I mean? And speaking of giving and taking at events, all right, let's talk about your, you, you know, your sales process. And you know what I mean? Some of the things that you've helped your clients do over the years uh, with sales. All right. And I know you're, you're, you're a great speaker. You're a great trainer on sales. Thank Can you. we talk about your process a little bit? Sure. Absolutely. So those people who are maybe getting into speaking or right now they're, 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 they're having to learn online speaking. Uh, they're getting a crash course in it right now. <laughs> That's um, right. What are some of the tactics that people should be doing prepping for sales? Other well, than I think a big start when you leave. I think, yeah, no, well, no, but I think a, a big part of it is is where your heart is and where your sales is not an intellectual or tactical process. Right. It's a strategic, and I'm pointing to my heart down here. It's mm -hmm. a strategic relational process, right? It it should be a you got to really like people. I mean, if you don't like people, you're you're in the wrong business. And and coming out of the Ziegler camp, you know, uh, and I had the honor of sharing this with Zig at lunch uh, before he passed. And uh, I said, you know, I read a C at the top when I was 17 years old, and uh, there was a quote in that book that forever changed my life. You can have everything in life you want when you help enough other people get what they want. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, Zig, when did you create that? And he said, Scott, I didn't create that. My mama taught me that when I was five. It was part of my christening when I was 12. Mm. I said, Zig, can I share that with people? He goes, I'd be honored. Yeah, yeah. And so I think a big part of the a big part of the selling process is how you go into it. See, I don't ever want to sell you anything. Mm -hmm. I always want you to buy a lot from me. Yeah. Therefore, it's my responsibility to create an environment for you to want what I have. Yes. And so the, the point is, it's it's directional in how you do it. And my platform and a big part of what I say is we need to we need to return respect, honor and dignity into the process. Mm. You know, you're there. They're there to buy. You're there to sell. But at the same time, you do that with respect, honor and dignity. Mm -hmm. And and my encouragement to folks is um please don't sell something that shouldn't be sold to the wrong person at the wrong time. Yeah, Just yeah. don't do it because yeah. it's going to come back on you anyway. Uh, it costs a whole lot more to, to run the return. It costs you a whole lot more with your merchant services company. It, it just the one thing I'm proudest about, uh, I'm proud of a lot of things I've been able to accomplish, but one of the things is over a 1500 talk series you know, 1500 events, my close percentage and my stick percentage is within three tenths of a percent. Wow. And, and so 
what that means is you don't sell things to people who shouldn't buy it in the first place. And what you sell stays sold. Well, yeah. that's done because of dignity, honor, and respect. You do it the right way with class. You create the environment for them to buy as opposed to you selling. You uh, welcome them into the opportunity. And it really all becomes, it, there's three absolutes. And the first is W-I-I-F-T, what's in it for them. You've got to come from that other's orientation. You have to understand that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. If they don't know you, they don't like you. If they don't like you, they don't trust you. But they have to trust you to do business with you. And the third one is the one that most people forget is people take action when they're ready, not when yeah. you're ready. And right. so you have to respect that. And if you haven't built trust and if you haven't built trust and they're ready, they're buying, they're just not buying from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you've built trust and they're not ready and you try to force them to buy, they're not going to buy from you or anybody else, but they're really not going to buy from you ever because you broke trust. Yeah. You have to, you have to take the time to build the relationship and the trust ahead of when they're ready. And so that's all part of that sales process, right? Is, is, Honoring them in their choices, honoring them in your presentation, doing it with quality and dignity. And then also, should you find out that they're not ready and not going to be ready right now, I actually teach a process called release with dignity, is actually allow them to back out of the situation, but maintain their dignity as a buyer. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that do? it ultimately allows them to come back to you as a buyer feeling proud of their decision now, as opposed to run from you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So again, I think we, I think a big part of the, the process is understanding we're in a 24, seven, 365 forever, forever business called delivering results. Mm -hmm. And if we do that with quality and with integrity, it's amazing what can happen along the way. Mm -hmm. It, it is. And you know what I mean? It's, it's, I love that word that you've used countlessly in their dignity. You know, uh, there's a lot yeah. of people I see in our industry. I mean, again, not to, I, you know, not to pick on, but there are ones that are still learning. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> still learning yeah. the right way to do things. Um, and, you know, I was that way for a long time. I had to still be learning the right way to do things. And finding someone like you who comes in and, and just speaks the truth about that. That's the truth is, you know what I mean? If they're not ready, your job is to, you know, actually educate them and treat them with, you know, respect and dignity and lead them along till they are ready. Because if the relationship isn't there when they are ready, they aren't buying from you. I love that. For well, the, the other side of it is once you've, you know, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. That means you first have to get them to know you. Then you have to get them to like you. Then you have to get them to trust you. Mm -hmm. And then you nurture that trust over a period of time. So when they are ready, it's also your responsibility to then stay in touch with them or create some kind of process that allows you to touch them occasionally to find out if they've become ready. Mm -hmm. You've now worked so hard to build the know, like, and trust. Why would you allow that to just dissipate? Mm -hmm. So it's also your responsibility to, hey, Tim, I totally appreciate what you're telling me right now. I tell you what, uh, could I check back with you, say, in two or three weeks and just kind of see what's going on in your world and just touch base? Would that be OK? Well, I don't think I'll be ready by then. I, I totally get that. I just want to make sure that we stay in touch and we work towards whatever is the best solution for you whenever that might be. Yeah, yeah. So. Right. And and so you you nurture that along the way. Relationships are I mean, everything is about know, like and trust. Mm -hmm. uh, you date people, you know, like and trust. You do business with people, you know, like and trust. You marry people, you know, like and trust. You divorce those you don't trust. Yes. No. I mean, we can solve the problems really quick. It's about trust. Yep. It is. And and so if I try to force you in a sales situation to do something that that you're not ready to do, don't want to do, uh, don't feel it's right for you to do. Um, at some point, you're going to reject that. Mm -hmm. And and why why would you want to go through all that that 
reversal of process and everything that, that that could come from that. Why wouldn't I just work to understand and ask you a very simple question, Tim, you know, it seems like we were going on a pretty good path there. What's holding you back? Mm -hmm. And just listen. Mm -hmm. The one thing we don't do enough in selling, we do way too much talking and not enough listening. So true. So true. <laughs> um, and I, 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 I do. I mean, and, 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 you know, some of the things I've watched is I've watched and observed, all right, like, you know what I mean? The event we were at in Palm Springs, I observed your process. I observed how you listened. I observed how you talked to people, all right, and asked questions. You know what I mean? And it was it was a very unique time for me to watch you and observe you because it was a smaller event, all right? And, they're, you know what I mean? They're, they're, those are some of the greatest events, by the way, uh, guys, is when these small events mm -hmm. happen, all right, and you're in a room full of, of, you know what I mean, the quality speakers that have been booked there to speak, well, we're all going to talk and we're all going to sit and learn from each other. And we're all going to say things like, you know what I mean? Right. So, uh, what, 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 what did you see right or wrong there? And we're going to talk about it. That's the yeah, there, there's trust. no doubt about it. You, you can see when somebody's pressing. It, it's funny when I, uh, as I train speakers, um, I've got like a dial -a meter mm -hmm. you know, Ooh, that was really good. Or, Ooh, that was probably not quite as good. <laughs> right. That was, that was, uh, did you realize you just said that? Mm -hmm. Did you realize that, you know, the word that you said there, or again, my, my speaking mentor trained us down to the word. Uh, one of the funniest stories is, is I got to do a 90 minute uh, talk right after he did one time. Gosh, this is years ago already. And, uh, Afterwards, he said, uh, would you like to do a debrief after your talk? I said, oh, that'd be freaking awesome. I mean, oh, my God. So he goes, well, come up to my come up to my suite after after you sign books and do all the different stuff, and we'll do a debrief. I said, and he goes, bring a notepad. Oh, okay. I'm, and so I go up there, and, and uh, he goes, do you want a drink? I said, well, do I need one? He goes, I think you probably do. And I go, oh, well, yeah, then I'll have a drink. And, and so I'm sitting there with my notepad, and I got my drink, and I'm ready to go. And I said, okay, I'm ready, John. Go ahead, give it to me. And he goes, remember at like minute 38 where you said the word advantageous or appropriate? Yeah. I said, yeah. He said advantageous would have been a much better word. I said, okay. He goes, that's it. Out of 90 minutes, he picked out one word. One word. One word. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so that's what people don't understand that it, sometimes it's one word that costs them the sale. Yeah, yeah. And they don't even know they said it. Yeah, you're so true. Um, so let's talk about your, you know, your, your, your speaking mentor. You know what I mean? Um, because I, I, you know, I, mean, I do believe people have mentors, and you and I, you and I have both had on our podcast. That's like part mm -hmm. of the subject in our podcast is, hey, who, let's talk about your mentor. <laughs> so. You know, I've got in my personal life, I've got somebody who actually made made a comment to me, a young boss when I was a young kid that like it's like a sentence that keeps me going. And I'm curious if like, you know, might not have been your speaker mentor, might have been your high school football coach or something. Do you have that? That, that like like that one line, it like sticks with you and drives you. Did anyone ever give well, that? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually I've had 19 mentors across my career mm -hmm. that I've written checks to. And, and um, if anybody believes in the value of a mentor, it's me. The reality is if you want somebody who's an expert in an area, somebody else has done it before you, go go find them, pay for that experience. Mm -hmm. Experience is, is an expensive teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, you just don't, you can buy it sometimes, right? Yeah. And so, but I think Zig, you know, Zig's quote, you can have everything in life you want when you help enough other people get what, what they want that was a foundational piece, right? And then, um, I mean, every mentor has had a piece in that. Jack Canfield from a success side has been a great mentor um, of just, you know, lead with your heart, you know, just be there, be who you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, just so many across the way, my speaking mentors speak with integrity, you know, again, it's it's very interesting because he trained a lot of people, and I'm the only guy that he ever referred to anybody to to um, when people came to him to find. And I said, John, why did you do that? 
And he said, because you're really the only guy who's done everything I ever suggested you do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, I can't believe that you've trained thousands of, of folks. He goes, but you're the only one who's ever done everything you, I asked you to do. And he goes, actually, I got to ask you a question. I said, what's that? He said, why'd you do that? <laughs> and I said, well, in order for me to answer that, let me ask you two questions. How many dollars worth of checks did I write you? And, and he said a number. And I said, yeah, that sounds about right. And I said, how many of those checks did you cash? And he said, every one of them. I said, you now have your answer. Yeah. Why would I pay you to learn from you and then not do what you tell me to do? Yeah, yeah. Or you suggest it for me to do, right? And I think that that's the, the I think that that's a little bit of our, a little bit of the issues today. People are saying, well, I'm going to go get out. Of, I'm going to go get a mentor. And if I like what he says, I'll follow that. <laughs> it ain't the way it works. <laughs> you know, there's a reason they're a mentor. They're, they've created a model. They've, they've done something in advance. Model what works. Mm -hmm. if, if you had all that expertise, you would have figured it out before you went to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to go to somebody, go to somebody and learn from them. Yeah, yeah. So I was I was very fortunate in my life that, that, that I got to know Zig personally before I ever read his books. Mm -hmm. That in itself is a is a mentorship that you you just can't put a dollar figure on. Um, and I've seen what Zig lived and what you know, what I mean, and what he wrote, and what mm -hmm. he spoke and all that stuff of all of the people you've been tied to your mentors and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure, you know, we don't have to list the ones that are bad, but how many of them can you list and go, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'd follow based on your example, not just your teaching. I didn't follow them if the example wasn't the right one to follow. Yeah. Uh, it, very interesting. And I won't mention the name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I went to an event early in my career, specifically going to follow a particular person. Okay. I was so excited they were there. I was so ready to write him a big check and, and just follow any word he said. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the doors fling open to the ballroom and there was a camera crew that was preceding him walking backwards. And he was coming in like he was the king or something. And, and you know, waving to the, I mean, really the royal wave and all the different stuff, right? And I'm like, well, okay, you know, part of that's marketing, you know, he's getting the videos and doing all that. I, I can, that's not me, but okay, I can still, I understand why he's doing it. And then at one point he said, I had a car accident and it almost killed me. That was seven months ago. And I can tell you today for the first time in my life, I'm coming from my heart and said that from stage. And I said, I am out. Yeah. Are yeah. you kidding me? See, that's one of those statements that you, you thought made as a speaker should ingratiate people, but it revealed the truth. Yeah. That it was never about the heart. It was never about the people. It was never about that. And that became revealed to me. And, and, um, I turned and went in a totally different direction. And I'm so glad I did. You know, again, we're both men of faith, so it's God's plan and timing is perfect. It's amazing how sometimes He jumps in there and stops some things from happening. Yeah. So, and you know, and I, and I, my earlier guest tonight uh, actually uh, brought up something. It's like you know, what I mean, you, you, she, she shared how basically when she was studying in life, that when she was ready to be taught, the teacher appeared. She was ready to learn. The teacher appeared. And as that, as Christians, I, I firmly believe that's just a part of life. You know what I mean? It's just like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we got to get totally knocked down to be able to willing to hear uh, the, the chosen one that God has brought into our lives to hear it. Um, and <laughs> how many times, though, Scott, have you heard it and said, man, I wish I would have heard this five years ago? Oh, like. I don't think there's enough notebooks to, to write down all those experiences. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's exactly one of the reasons why I suggest creating an evidence log mm -hmm. to, you know, for both the good and the less than good mm -hmm. uh, is 
the reality is, I mean, I haven't had this conversation since earlier today. We, we get so wrapped around the axle sometimes that what's going on in our world is, I just don't understand why this isn't coming through. I mean, this is the perfect situation for me. Oh, this is where my career is supposed to go. It's just the very best. But it's I'm so frustrated. And then you look back, and that person was brought up on corruption charges, or, you know, there's, there's so many different, right? And you go, oh, mm-hmm. had that worked out, I would have been right in the middle of that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's as an example, you see the book right there. <laughs> That's my, my new book. But, but my career started, my speaking career started because of the SARS virus. Mm. And and I wanted to go out and become a professional speaker. And a friend of mine was running a, a seminar company. And uh, I said, if you ever need somebody, I'd, you know, I'm making my move into being a professional speaker. And he called me six weeks before an event. And he said, uh, were you serious about that? And I said, yeah, why? He goes, I not only have one spot, I have two. I'll pay you two fees mm-hmm. if you go do this for me. And I said, great, you know, why? And he said, because the events in Toronto, the SARS virus is is hit very hard. And we've, you know, it's six weeks from now. And, you know, I'll give you both spots because two speakers backed out. And I said, well, I can die of SARS or I can die on stage. Let's go. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happened was Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen came into my rooms, heard me speak. And said, son, if you're not using this talent that God has granted you, you're robbing humanity. You're cheating humanity. In fact, you're being selfish. Mm -hmm. You need to be out there speaking professionally from this point forward. And that's what launched my career. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting in in a time like that with corona and what's going on. And the reality is that the opposite sides, I forget what the symbol is called, but it's it's really chaos is the opposite of that is opportunity, right? It, it, within chaos, there's always opportunity. With what's going on right now in the world, there's opportunity. There's opportunity to, to clean up our world. There's opportunity to reset your life. There's opportunity to become a better person. There's opportunity to heal your relationships. There's opportunity to, you know, refocus your career. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different things right now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's always, always inspirational when I hear those stories. Because I personally, you know, when Zig told me, Tim, you should be a speaker, from the moment he told me that to the moment I took action was almost six years to the date. And it's like so many of us will get that advice, all right, and then go, yeah, okay, yeah, I don't quite see that. And we put it off and we wait. But there's good in the way. I mean, because I sit back now and go, well, I wish I would have had, but wait a minute. All right. Had I had, you know, the girl that I thought was the girl of my dreams, I wouldn't have my great wife now. Had I went to work with that certain speaker, all right, I'd be in handcuffs in jail beside him. If I went to, <laughs> the, the list can go on and on, right? Yeah. There, um, there's no doubt about that fact. Yeah. I mean, you know, Garth Brooks wrote the song. Thank God for unanswered prayers. Yep. Yep. So, and you know, I was thinking about it right now, uh, you know what I mean? With the coronavirus. Um, and you know, and I'm pretty sure you're probably the same way right now. I'm, I'm listening to as many seminars as I can, as well as plugging in and, and booking myself mm-hmm. in as speaker. But, um, I don't, maybe you feel this way. Maybe not. I've started to say that I, I feel that this is a time that like, you know, it's time that the, the false prophets are going to get, cleared. And those people who are doing the honest work, the honest speakers, the honest trainers are going to stand out like a, like a rock star, like, you know what I mean? Superstar now. Uh, How do you feel about that? I I totally agree with you. I think, I think we're in a, I really do believe we're in a reset. Mm -hmm. I think we're in a, um, you know, God put us all in timeout, sent us to our room, Mm -hmm. you know, and just said timeout you know, let's, let's get this thing back again. I think it's about returning respect, honor, and dignity to all. Mm -hmm. I think that, that those, um, I think a lot of the, a lot of the reason the, 
um, the good ones haven't necessarily been recognized because it's been about busyness and hype. Yeah. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden the busyness and hype is not nearly as important. There's a redirection on what's important Yeah, and people are starting to see, Oh, wow. That makes a lot of sense. And you're right. I, what if I really like that idea better, you know? And again, I think, you know, it's interesting. Not a while back I did an event and somebody said, how do you have the courage to lead with faith on stage? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said, it's absolutely simple. I work for one guy and I learned I'm allergic to lightning. You know, I have zero desire to get smoked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That, I think that's going to be my quote on this whole thing. I know. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's like you got to be true to yourself, right? Yeah. You, you got to be true to, to what it is. I've already had a near-death experience. I'm an overachiever. I live through it. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, um, you, you just, over time, it's interesting because I think there's a, there's a great talk, uh, and actually Stephen Furtick has done it. Joel Osteen has done it. And multiple people have done it, but it's about faith in the middle. Mm. Having faith early is easy. Having faith late is easy, but faith for the middle. When, when it doesn't seem like everything's working, when it doesn't seem like everything's coming together, you know, we're, we're sitting here at home and, and we're in the middle of this, right? Mm-hmm. And so what's your faith in the middle like, you know, when it first started? Oh, yeah, we, got, we need to lock down things because we got to stop this thing. Okay, that's easy. And once we come out the other end of it, when we say, well, we've saved a bunch of lives and, and although... Uh, you know, it's been catastrophic to the economy. You know what? We're a strong people. We'll come back and build that again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that faith. It's this faith in the middle. That's hard, right? It's, it's when you're in the, in the throes of the process, when everybody goes, I just don't think that's working. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's right. Hey, it is so easy to have 2020 hindsight, it is so easy to be an armchair quarterback. Oh, my goodness. You know, there isn't, if anybody, this is not a political statement. It doesn't matter who's in the office. But if anything, anybody thinks the office of the president is an easy one right now, really? I mean, impossible impossible decisions right now, Mm -hmm. right? And, and, ramifications worldwide. And, you know, that's as far as I'll go with that. It, yeah. I mean, you got to have some, some empathy. You've got to have some, you know, throw some, a little faith and good juju in the direction that good decisions are made. That's all you can do. I don't know anybody that purposefully makes bad decisions Yeah, yeah. You know, in their life or career. Right. But sometimes in the middle you're, you're in the middle of something, you've got to go until there's some kind of conclusion to it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you know, you got to follow it long enough to figure out what the heck is going on. And, and I mean, it's, I ran to the grocery store today. I, I was actually out of my house. It was like, Oh my God, what am I doing? Right. But I had my bandana on and, um, you know, was there as short a period as I could possibly be? Not because I couldn't have been there longer, but it's to respect. There are people making very tough decisions saying, please stay away from people and please stay in, at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, we're all antsy. We all would rather be doing I would rather be else. out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't imagine what your living room looks like with your motorcycle doing laps around the couch right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah anyway we won't no. get into that um <laughs> but you know it's it's yeah the middle uh you know scott it's like right now i'm in the middle of a, of a of a challenge i gave myself and i'm sitting here looking at it there's no way i'm gonna make this in, within my parameters do i quit no I'm still going at it, still booking, still trying to figure it out, still trying to to do what I got to do. All right. And in the middle of it, um, I'm planning an event. I did Kim's event for her. It's like, you know, let, okay, God, I want to give myself a challenge. Let me set the impossible out. Please help me here, God, do the impossible. 
And in the beginning, you're like, yeah, you could do it. In the middle, what the hell? Uh, you know, and it's almost like God going, well, I let you go plan it. Let's see what you can do there, big boy. Go for it. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's my my conversation every morning is, Lord, what would you have me do today? Yeah, yeah. Direct, direct my steps. Yeah. You know, let me make it make it as good a day as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. You so, know, that's all. All you can do is apply the effort and and do it from the right place for the right reasons. Do it consistently. Do it long enough. And one day, you know, hey Megan, how you doing? You know one Megan? day, yeah, I do know Megan. Yes, I had her on last and, week. I just got to know her last week. So yeah. Well, that's funny. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's just, you know, all you can do, all you can do is all you can do, mm -hmm. right? But do it from the right place for the right reasons and, and do it consistently enough. And you know what? Someday you might get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> it might just work. And, and, and that's it. I mean, you remember, I mean, this is a, I think this is a Joel Osteen quote, one of his first books he, where he actually said, you know I mean? Basically, I tell people, do what you do and God will do what he can do. And you'd be surprised where the middle is. Well, that, that's the whole point. I mean, a, a big part of that is he said, you know, do what you can do and do, and God will do what you can't do. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and that's really the fact is that um, that's why a big part of what I encourage is you, you've got to have belief in higher source, whatever that is for you. Mm -hmm. It's not my job to get you to believe what I believe. It is my job to encourage you to believe because if you don't believe, that means you're it. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure you're not. Yeah. And I don't know why you'd want that pressure anyway. That means you're the almighty. And so um, whatever you choose to, to believe in, then believe it and live it. Yeah. Be that living example of it. And again, not my job to get you to believe what I believe. Now, I'll talk to you about it if you want to, or I'll help you any way I possibly can. But that's my job is to be the living example of those beliefs and live it the best way I possibly can. Does that mean I don't make mistakes? Of course not. Does that mean I'm you know, better than anybody else? No. I mean, trust me, I've had plenty of foils in my life and my career. You don't get to be this age without a scar or two. Right. But the, but the point is that you, do you do it purposely? You sure hope not. You know, you, you do the best you can and and you work to be an encouragement to other folks and and help them on their path. You know, it, it's funny when you get more mature. That's code word for old. When you get more mature. Right. We have this opportunity to pass along um, what we've learned by the butt kickings we've taken. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some real value in that. Now don't do it without being asked for them. But if somebody asks, please share yeah. because there's so much that can be learned by so many people. I think people have a real uh, boomers. My age group have this real upset with millennials. And the problem is they just don't understand them. Yeah. Millennials uh, are the only millennials don't want their butts kicked. They're just, they learned that at a, at a earlier age than we did. Mm -hmm. We just thought getting your butt kicked was the way you learned. They've said, no, I can watch you get your butt kicked. I don't need to. Yeah. Right. And so boomers are upset that they won't get their butts kicked. Well, they just are smarter than we are faster. That's all. Yeah. But if we were to share some of that wisdom with them, just think what we could do. I think every boomer should team up with a millennial. And quite frankly, every millennial should reach out to a boomer. And I think we would solve a lot of problems together. We 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 would the the next generation would definitely be a better generation if we did. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that fact. Yeah, I I think it's the the millennials really want the help and guidance. Yeah, they they're just not really great at asking for it necessarily, and and so that's taken as arrogance, and it's really almost shyness. I don't think it's arrogance at all. I think it's that nobody's ever invested in them enough to say, I'm here. If you need me, reach out to me. I, I would love to work with you. Yeah. So, Scott, I, I, you know, we've had a great conversation here tonight, but you know what I mean? I do want to make sure people can get a hold of you. What is the best place they can get a hold of you online? Best place, uh, my website is Scott Schilling online. 
Com. Mm-hmm. And then it, my email is very complex. It is Scott at Scott Schilling.com. So, you know, just it's my name, you know, reach out. I, I would love to. And I'm really serious about teaming up some boomers with millennials. So if you're a boomer that wants to get, you know, create that kind of pairing with a millennial or a millennial that wants to get paired up with a, a boomer, reach out. Let's make something happen. Let's let's do some things together and figure out how we can ultimately re- turn some respect, honor, and dignity to the planet. You know, Scott, that would be a, a interesting podcast for the two of us to lead. We bring let's in one it. boomer, one millennial every podcast, and we just sit there and, and facilitate the conversation between the two of them. I love it. Let's do it. Let's do that, man. I think we should. Yeah. So, so look at that. We're going to create a podcast out of this. <laughs> Well, that's the way things work, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's there's not all that many new things, but sometimes when you get a conversation going, it's amazing what pops up, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and the it, it's all about, you know, people. You let's go back to the original conversation on sales. Mm-hmm. Everybody makes sales so hard. It's four words: identify problem, provide solution. Mm-hmm. Four words. That's it. Yeah. And and the reason I thought of that is that's what just happened there identified problem provided solution let's have a podcast let's do this yeah yeah you know that's so that how will things be the meeting that scott will I, and i will be having later in the week about how we're going to have a podcast and you guys are going to see this like within if i know scott right after my may event you're going to see the first episode the two of us will just put this together we will that's right we'll do it let's yeah. do it so heck yeah. it'll be a blast. it will so let's see if we have any other comments before we we we, we go this out so megan says it was great to see the two of us together so well, thank you, Megan. Yeah. Great to see you. Yeah. And Kim thinks y'all you know, both amazing. Thank you, Kim. You are a blessing to both thank of us. Kim. So also his wisdom's off the charts. Well, huh, thank you. So thank you. <laughs> She's just a wonderful, wonderful girl to have in our, our neck of the woods, huh? So, yep, absolutely. So, my friend Scott, I have a game that I like to close out my podcast with. Maybe you've heard I, of it. I don't do games, yeah. Tim. You know, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. I, I got this from watching this guy, Sammy Hagar, doing it on TV. Now, I think I'm cooler than Sammy Hagar, but, you know, hey, opinions are, can vary on that. Um, <laughs> There's not a doubt you are cooler than Sammy Hagar. Does that make the question easier? Yeah. Can, can, can you call Sammy and tell him to be on the podcast so I can give him the this or that? <laughs> okay. Anyway, I've created a wonderful list, Scott, just specially made for you with about eight or nine questions. Okay. I'm going to awesome. give you a choice of one or the other. You just tell me which one you prefer. Okay. Let's start off with this one. I like this one as my start off question. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Okay. First, first trilogy or second trilogy? First. Okay. Okay. So if you're riding in the car, Scott, which we're not doing that much of it nowadays, <laughs> would you rather listen to a podcast or music? Boy, that's tough. And the podcast um, can be the audio book. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably it'd probably be a podcast because I, I listen to, you know, I use that as a rolling university all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Podcast. You know, and it was so interesting today having Tom on the program and Tom Ziegler telling about, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I started by, you know, making the, t- the tapes. They were cassette tapes. <laughs> um, Tom's lying. They were eight tracks. <laughs> Oh, we both love you, Tom. I'm just just messing with you, buddy. So this next one here. Okay, what was it? Yeah, go ahead. Is that my outside voice? Sorry, I was kidding. Uh, Um, Love you. Um, This next one here is a little bit interesting. Some people believe this is right and some believe wrong. So pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Absolutely. (laughs) I know we both relate, man. (laughs) <laughs> nothing, nothing beats a pineapple and pepperoni pizza. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so good. So yeah. good. Would you rather have a dog or a cat? Dog. Dog. Willie the Wonder Puppy. You still it's have a your puppy, pound you? chocolate standard poodle. Yeah. He's the best. Glass of wine or bottle of beer? Uh, I grew up in Milwaukee. It's hard to get away from the beer. <laughs> I've sat and had some good beer combination with you. Come to think of it, I actually see, yeah. uh, we were sitting and and we, we were in Palm Springs. Yeah, and he, I want 
I want a blue moon with a little bit of orange juice in it. I'm like, why are you putting the orange juice in? Same thing as the orange. I mean, coriander, just, that's right? The coriander it's brewed with. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? Ooh, and so it good. just just a touch. Not like you know what I mean. Not like a you know not not like your mimosa. It was just a touch, and it's the same thing. And I'm like, I never thought of that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, taco or hamburger? Boy, taco. Taco. Yeah. You've you you lived in the South for a while. I got to take that taco. <laughs> for Thirty-two years now. Yep. All right. If you're going to the movies, are you going to get a thing of popcorn or a candy? Popcorn. Salt and butter or just buy it plain? Butter. Yeah. Butter it up, baby. Yeah. yeah. Butter, extra butter, and then <laughs> butter on the butter. <laughs> you only live once. Let's go out with a bang. <laughs> you're going to clog it up, clog it up good. <laughs> uh this next one has been known to create wars. People will fight over this. All right. Some people don't even have it right now, but we're going to pray for them. But in the bathroom, does the toilet paper go over or under on that roll? I make sure I change it so it's over like the patent has dictated it to go. Scott, uh, so I had I, I had Scott McCain on last week, and Scott said that's the one question when I was on radio. You put it on, and the phones would ring up. I mean, they'd go off the hook. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and what was the other one? I had Cammy Baker on. Do you know Cammy Baker out of New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cammy Baker last week. Cammy says, "Well, if I'm dating a guy, you know, the first two times, uh, you know what I mean, I'll change the role for him back to the way it's supposed to be. But by the third time, that's it. I'm breaking up with him. This right, this ain't meant to be." <laughs> And That's some of the crazy. calmest people on my show, that question will bring them to life. <laughs> hey, it's the patent. The patent is over the top. It's the way the patent was issued by the U.S. Patent Office. But the patent's expired. I don't care. It's precedent. <laughs> my last one, Scott, is a little funny one I like to ask. Boxers or briefs? You have to really, you have to, I oh, know boxers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was going to go with, come on, you know, <laughs> uh, what fun. Yeah. What we, fun. We've never what shared fun. a room together at events, so I wouldn't know, but anyway, no, no, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, Scott, again, it's been fun having you on the show tonight. Very, very, a uh, lot of wisdom you've shared tonight. And I want to make Tim. sure, make sure uh, my listener really, one more time can find you online. So, I mean, it's for the audio and the video. Tell them your website one more time. ScottShillingOnline.com or Scott at ScottShilling.com as an email address. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Scott, I thank you, buddy. I really do. I thank you. It's been an honor having you on again. All right. Thanks You're always for the opportunity. It's always fun. We always yeah. have a good time. Yeah, But remember, two weeks from now, we start a new podcast for boomers and millennials. So don't even try to get out of that. Don't even no, no, try no, to. No, no, no. You kidding? I'm going to have it on my my email out tonight. It's going to be, hey, what, what's when's the meeting for this? I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to send you a link to my calendar and say, find a spot. Let's talk. Okay. Sounds so, good. Let's do it. Do. So, all right, guys. It's another uh, great episode here. Scott Schilling, a great friend of mine. It was great to get to know him and more and uh, bring his wisdom wisdom to you, my listeners. Uh, go check him out, scottschillingonline.com. I'm Tim Gillette with The Tim Gillette Show. Follow us on uh, YouTube. We're on Anchor FM, and we are now up on Apple Podcasts. All right? And subscribe. Get to know when our next episode's coming out. I'm Tim Gillette. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Sounds good.